whenever I attended my first postmasters meeting, I knew I wanted to join. They were very friendly, and they were offering me the opportunity to practice my speaking skills, something that I had identified that I needed to do. So after my first meeting, I signed up. And on the second meeting, I was asked about B71. And I wondered, had I mistakenly joined the Masonic Lodge? <laughs> what was B71? Mr. Postmaster, fellow postmasters, and most welcome guests, hopefully after tonight, you will understand how to B71, and you will realize that there are no funny handshakes here, and we're certainly not affiliated to any Masonic Lodges. So before we go on to B71, I'd like to go back a bit and talk about goal setting. And uh, one of my favorite quotes is from the management guru, Stephen Covey. And it's quite simple, and it's start with the end in mind. And basically, he's telling us that before we go off and do a load of things, so plan and, and make lots of actions and control and evaluate, that what we really need to do before we, we start all that action is to actually think about what we want to achieve and where we want to go. So, what I want to show you is what probably you've already seen. I apologise for keep I'm going backwards and forwards. But I'm sure most of you have heard about these SMART goals or SMARTER goals as they are these days. So specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time bound, and then the two on the end, which seem to be the new ones. And um, to give an example of my own non-smart goal, a couple of years ago, I did have the idea that I might like to be better at public speaking. And I sort of had this idea and didn't really do anything about it. And then I decided that I might want a different job. And looking at different jobs, um, a lot of these jobs require public speaking skills. And then I had the idea of writing this down, that I wanted a new job, and I did some gap analysis, and speaking skills were there. And then I read that you could go to Toastmasters and practice speaking. And uh, when I joined, I then realized that you could do a lot of speeches in a manual. And that's when it got real for me, because once I knew you could do speeches in a manual, and I planned how many I wanted to do, and in what time frame, then I got my smart goals. So the last two are important as well, so I had to keep evaluating whether these goals were still irrelevant for me, and um, also whether I was still on track, or whether I needed to adjust the goal or do something to get myself on track. So these, this way of formulating our goals helps us to um, break down great big overarching goals into little chunks, and it makes it more manageable. So I would really encourage you to write your Toastmaster speaking goals down, either on paper or electronically, and I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. And apparently, it's this act of physically committing them to paper or putting them somewhere that is really good at motivating us. And I know this is easier for some people than others. I'm affectionately known in my family as Miss Clipboard. And so I'm definitely the kind of person who likes to write it all down and I've got whiteboards all over the place and tick lists and you know, I love it. And I know that some people definitely aren't like that and uh, they probably don't even know what they're doing next week. But even if you're not Mr. or Ms. Clipboard, I would really recommend that you think about your speaking goals and write them down. Um, there is some research saying that if you have written them down, you're 42% more likely to complete them. So, go for it. And I would also, on behalf of the committee, like to invite you to be more proactive about your goals at Toastmasters. So the first step would be to share this information with your mentor. And if there are any roles or speeches that you need to get to achieve your Toastmasters award, then please also share that with your mentor or with Steve, our VPE. <coughs> And you can also request speeches online, and I'll show you that later. And that said, obviously, the VPE does have to balance the club's interest versus the interest of individuals. So if your goal is to speak for the next 10 meetings, I'm sorry, but that's not achievable, and you're going to be a bit disappointed. 
However, we do have a policy now for allocating speech, so the committee thought about this and thought how we are, how could we make it fair and how could we allocate speeches. And I would just like to share that with you because that's something new. So what we're hoping to do is that all new members, as a gold standard, so that's something we're aiming for, they would get two speeches and one role within their first month, three months of joining, and that gives our new members chance to really get their um, legs under the table and get going and develop some kind of momentum. And then our second priority will be people who've already requested speeches online or through their mentors or via the VTE or roles. They will be the next people who will um, get slots. And then after that, they're going to be looking at people who are reliable and have good attendance. And then the next one on our list are those re reluctant or hesitant members amongst us, so people who may be a bit shy in coming forward or maybe need a little bit of a push to do something that they haven't already done. And after that, if we've got any unfilled slots, it'll be whoever turns up on the evening. If there are any empty slots and they want to volunteer for them, they're yours. So we have developed this policy because in the past it has been really difficult for the VCU to fill roles and there's quite a lot of chasing that goes on and it's also very time consuming. That being said, although we have our policy, um, there's always last minute slots that are coming up so if you are really anxious to push ahead and get on with your speeches, um, prepare a speech, have it in your back pocket and um, you can put yourself forward as a reserve speaker and you can get your speeches like that. So in the same way that individual club members um, have goals, our club has its club goals and they're set out in the distinguished club plan which we commit to paper and send to the district governor and if we achieve all our goals then we get these ribbons which you can see here and I believe that every year since the club has been formed we have always got a ribbon because we've always met our goals so no pressure this year guys. <laughs> But examples of these goals would be that we would have like two people who would need to complete their com competent communicator manual by June or um, four people to attend club officer training. So these are the kind of goals that the club has. And obviously, ideally, we're trying to line up your goals with the club goals. And that's why it's really important for you to share with us what your individual goals are. Now, the main tool for this goal sharing, like individual, club, and also sorting out the meetings is C71, the famous C71. And I was hoping to show you that tonight live. Um, unfortunately, what I didn't realize was that we actually haven't got any Wi-Fi in this room. So I'm sorry it's gonna be a bit dull and they're screenshots, but um, at least screenshots work and avoid that terrible moment where you click on it and it doesn't happen. So I'm just going to show you a few screenshots of how you yourselves can manage some of your goals on D71 and apologise in advance for boredom. <laughs> so when you sign on, that's the, that's the screen you're going to see, and you'll see everyone listed here. And if you wanted to send anyone within the club an email, you can do through this screen if you don't already know their email addresses. But this is the key tab as far as I'm concerned, is my participation and from there you can navigate into all the other things. So this is what we're really encouraging you to do, is to sign up for meetings in advance. It really helps us if we know who's attending so we can get the roles allocated in advance. So in an ideal world, you would, every couple of weeks, click on um, this my meeting and you'll see all the roles for meetings and there's me and you can see that I'm doing an educational tonight and I would click on the green arrow to accept that role and if we know you know things happen in life and, and, and um, things crop up if I realise that someone I couldn't do it I could also decline it through so that screen letting the VP know so that they can um, get someone else to fill in the role. And see, you can um, have as many of these up as you want, I think it's up to about six weeks. So it would be really great if people could, in advance, go in and sort of click, yes, I'm going to be there, yes, I'm not, and then we can allocate the roles on that basis. Louise, I know I'm a bit thick. <laughs> no, you're not. But if 
it would be nice to know what you do from, okay, I want to go in, I want to, to log on. What do I put in to get through to be so smart? You want the, the links coming up at the end? That you mean the, the bit that you actually would log on for? To, to go into this. That was the, that, that screen I showed you was the first screen you see when you log on. Yeah. It is yeah. For me, um, I, mean, I don't get into it, but I did struggle getting into it from the word go. Okay. What's the website go? What, what website do you put in to go in there? Um, I'll, it's at the back. Okay. It's at the back of the slides. It comes at the link at the back. Okay. Is that yeah. all right? Yeah, yeah. I, I just yeah. want, want to say what the difficulty I had okay. when I first started doing it. Yeah. Is that getting username and password, Georgie? I'm sorry? This right the reference to the getting username and password. That's, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Because yes. usually when you sign up, you can all, um, or when you become a guest at the meeting, I'll assign people to the user from website, and uh, an email is automated to that person with their username and password on it. Yeah. So it's, 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 that, that could be a risk if they miss that email. Mm. Is that how their password I don't know what the password is, but right. they know what that password is. Yeah. So maybe that's what you Yeah. I'm happy to also like sit with you and we can just look at it. So um, this is from that that um, screen you saw when you sign up the individual meetings is request for speech. So this is another thing we really want you to be able to use as well. So if you want to do a speech, and as you see here, you can put in the title, the work, what you're doing, and you get the opportunity to put in your three preferred dates. And it says, you know, we can guarantee you you're going to get it, but um, hopefully that would um, flag it up to see that you're available and want to do it. And so the next tab is communications progress. So here you see what workbooks you're working on. So um, this is not signed to workbook, and then it's already been scheduled. And you can see um, all the speeches that you've done from that step. So that's a really good way of tracking your progress. Again, you can request a speech from this screen, and also this is the one I really want you to be using, is this set yourself a goal, put, put in a goal, what's your goal? So I need um, four speeches before the end of this year, that's the goal I set myself. And it tracks it nicely for you, so if you are Ms. or Mr. Clipboard, it's lovely, you can watch her. <laughs> and then the next tab from my participation is leadership progress. Now this is, I find this really good because especially if you're on the competent uh, leader where you've got like lots of different things that you need to tick off and it's quite confusing to see which ones you've done and which ones you haven't. When you log into this, it will show you the ones in green that you've done. And as you can see, that after I've done tonight, this will go green as well. And don't forget, you can set yourself leadership goals, set yourself a goal, and I failed this one, but I could reevaluate according to smart goals and um, adjust it. So you're allowed to do that all yourself. And so the last thing I wanted to show you was our new improved website. Now, if you're like me, you probably um, sort of went on the web, found the Toastmasters and didn't ever go back there again. And I just wanted to tell our members that um, Jazz has put loads of effort into our website and we have our own members as part of it now, which is stuffed full of really interesting content, and which many of you have contributed to. And it's obvious that not only have we got really talented speakers, we've got people who can write as well. So this is Sally's very witty review of our uh, last meeting. But there's lots of things on there about tips about evaluation, tips about mentoring. It's really worth checking out. So if you are an existing member and you haven't visited our website for about a year, please go and look at that. It's really exciting. And it's all linked up to Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn. And it's so it really, whatever your social media preference is, you can do it. So that's the way to start. And also, if you go onto this site, you can get onto D71 from there. So if you can get onto there, there's a link. And unlike most websites I've ever tried, all the links on our website work. <laughs> so I just want to um, encourage you to goal set, use this site. It will really help us to um, run our meetings a lot better. And I hope you achieve everything you want to achieve in 2014. 
and complete your incomplete and complete the complete and complete. <laughs> 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 <laughs>